someone cozy inside. Luckily, I managed to light up the fireplace before getting smacked over the head. You should get close to the fire. Warm yourself up. Quite easy to lose your limbs to the hypothermia in these parts. To have, I have this one's hand. These men's. You're the one neglecting your own health. Well, everything just happened so quickly. I hope you don't mind if I put the gun somewhere more safe. I mean, of course. I'm really sorry. If I knew you were a friend, I wouldn't have acted that way. Should I write it on my face? Go laugh. Maybe you should. I took you for a burglar at first. Julia already had taken off her coat and was straightening up her sweater. I was finally able to take a good look at her. She was pretty. Thanks heavens to not hair and features from pops, but from the eyes. A burglar who comes here by car opens the house with a key and gets inside to warm himself up. How do you decide to arm yourself with a gun? I'm always a bit confused when I come to my senses. Sometimes it makes me do or say strange things. I also hadn't changed much, so I assumed the grandpa still lived here, and you were a nasty trespasser. It's true that I had no chance to remodel the house, it was always a bit tight on time. By the way, what do you mean when I by when I come to my senses? I took a pizza from the fridge, shoved it into the microwave. How in the bloody hell do you fit a pizza in the microwave? It's a bit complicated. A very long story, so to speak. We have plenty of time on our hands. She heaved a deep sigh. Promise me you won't laugh. I've been sleepwalking since I was 13. I just go outside, then decide on a random direction. I decide to pull for people passing by. And it was impossible to wake me up. Absolutely impossible. <coughs> Excuse me. So someone would just lead me to a safe place, the police or the hospital. Nothing to laugh at so far. I can stop if you want. No, no, please, continue. So my parents decided to put me into lock and key. They set up cameras and locked the door to my room. I even showed me the records once. I just stood in pitch black darkness and turned the door knob. It was so spooky. I bet it was. Seizures. Seizures? The seizures continued for a while, then suddenly stopped. It seemed like the other me who was taking control of me gave up. I forgot about my naturals for a while, as did my parents. I have to return when I was starting to live alone next October, though. I figured I was to wake up in the forest or out at the lakeside, a long way from home, sometimes even 10 kilometers away. And now, I'm here. And where are you from? Orenburg. What? That, that Orenburg from the south of the border? Really? That's, it's at least 2,000 kilometers away. Is pizza ready? Alright, what kind of eldritch abomination are you? I don't know where this said. Like, what eldritch abomination are you that allows you to walk that far in one night? Ah, that's right. I took out the plate and handed it to Julia. She carefully took a slice and put it in her mouth. Again, what, what microwave or what pizza are you cooking that, again, fits and cooks in the microwave? Was it like pizza slices, like from the fridge? This is a very important question. This is an incredibly important question, actually. Also, I have not forgotten. You will explain things to me, Alicia. Julia. Okay, Julia. I took the plane and handed it to Julia. She gently took a slice and put it in her mouth. No dip, Sherlock. It's so hot. You need to rush. So you came all the way from Orenburg? Seems like it. How did you get here? I don't know. What's the date, by the way? December 31st. Julia's mom won a game. She dropped the size she was on. You must be joking. I swear. God, I was away for a month. Do you really expect to believe you got here in a month? Sleepwalking all the way? My parents must be worried sick with a disaster. I sighed. The story was hard to believe. I have to come on. I'll say that I went to see my friend in the country. She of all people know I have no friends like that. She knew I've lost my phone to boot. My head is splitting open with pain again. You can, as, you can use mine just to please calm down. What psychic powers do you have? What is going on with you? You are far too cute and pretty to be not be something. Really? I owe you one. Dealer clutched the phone and ran outside, and I finally picked up the plastic bags that were sitting by the front door. 
chicken was already thawing. Julie won't want to enter the forest again. Her muffled voice could be heard on the outside. He was saying about some, saying something about the bonies, bad reception, and memory loss. I had to call Pops and ask him to pick her up. I was forgotten how busy I was myself, how much I needed done before Mom came to visit. I didn't even know how soon she was going to come. I contacted her as well. Julia returned visibly exhausted. Now that it didn't go that bad, I was able to persuade her that I'm alright. Nightmare. A month of my life just poof, gone. I bet she was expecting you to come for New Year's Eve. My parents don't celebrate. You don't even set up a tree. I'm always going on business trips, so they don't spend that much time at home anyways. And that means I'm always all alone during the holidays. I still love that time of year, though. Well, at least it's nice to let your mom worries about you. Isn't that true for every mom? Not mine, at the very least. Julia wanted to say something, but she hesitated. She probably had more questions, but was afraid to be rude. Which was rather amusing, considering she was the one to smack with a frying pan just a little while ago. You want to call Pops? He'll be glad to hear you. Yeah, I probably should. Miss him so much. Wait, what if we surprise him? Wouldn't your presence here be enough of a surprise? I mean, is there a chance I could see him? Out of the question. The trip would take too much time, and I'm expecting guests. Sorry, that was brazen of me. Not as brazen as pointing a gun in my face, though. Though I admit to, though I had to admit, her confidence level dropped at least twofold in the fateful moment of our meeting. Now she just kept on fixing her hair. That was probably too harsh. No, not at all. I'd drive you. I'd drive you there any other day, Nicholas's daughter, after all. But today, I understand. Julia rubbed her brow. Do you mind if I take a call? If you, blah, blah, blah. do you mind if I take a call? No problem. Should I leave? You don't have to. I just need to check on something real quick. Julia nodded. I dialed my mom's number and turned away, reflect, reflecting the blah blah blah. Words. Then next March, March. I wasn't even sure if she'd pick up. I was already hung up a tune and message when the call suddenly connected. Hello? Uh, hi. Hi. Cold as ever. When will you be coming? Uh, as soon as I finish. Got it. Andrew? What? Are you alright? And are you generally interested? Everything's fine. Hi. Be careful on the road. It's gonna be a blizzard. I dropped the call as she was saying something. This would put her in my shoes for once. I did my trembling in hands about pockets and turned back and so that the judgmental look on Julia's face. I hope you weren't talking to your mom right now. Oh, you're gonna teach me how to deal with my own mother? It seems to me like you hate her. Don't blow it out of proportion. And don't look like I'm some sort of monster. You don't have the full picture. I'm only, I'm only talking about what I see, and I'm more than willing to listen to your side of the story. No, you talk about something you have absolutely no idea about. And do I look like I need a shoulder to cry on? I'm not gonna pity you. She gazed at me intently. I couldn't suppress a nervous smile. As you wish. Seems like it's easier for you to open up to a rock rather than to another human being. It'd be such a shame to let someone know that you can be vulnerable, right? She extended her hands toward me, waiting for the phone. We'll have to do the. We'll have to do without surprises. What's going on? Am I really that repulsive? Her reputation with my mom. I really with my mom is on my own business. Why would I confine to a stranger? Why am I even worried? Who cares what she thinks? I should have known. Maybe. Some time passed, but Julie wasn't coming back. She was so lively uh, while talking to her mom, but now I couldn't hear a thing. I had clearly made a mistake. She had, done, had, no, had nothing to do with me and my mom not getting on well. I was straight up rude. She most likely meant no harm. And she had Pop's blood in there. He would, all, he would also scold me all the time. I hope she wouldn't take everything to heart. Still, I look in her eyes. Did she despise me so much? The front door opened without a sound. The cold wind made my skin tingle. Really, his face was red for some reason. Everything okay? Then, back? No. Sorry, I completely missed the line there. Oh well. Sorry, I went a bit too far. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry as well. Should have minded my own business, so it's my own fault. She covered her face with her hand. Oh 
no, no, no. I mean, I'm fine. How's Pops? Did you talk to him? Yeah, you were right. He was delighted to hear me. He said he'd come as soon as he finishes some business in the workshop. What's the deal this time? I thought we finished everything by now. Julia averted her gaze. And then pride. Anyways, that's good news. If you wish you could. Can I use your bathroom? Huh? Sorry, I may sound strange, but I don't remember when was the last time I took a shower. It would also be cool to do some laundry. Sure, it's on the second floor. Well, you should already know that. Bathrobes are so and such are in the closet. Fresh towels on the left. And if you want a hair dryer, I think I'll manage. Sorry for the trouble. You know, I'm gratitude and went up the stairs trying to hide a beet red face under her hair. Shook my head. What happened to her? She wanted so much to look at me a minute ago, and now the top still is on about me. Oh, gee, is it gossiping again. I mean, it's not like I wanted her to hate me. She was acting rather cute. Besides, did she just go up? Did she just go to the show and know there's no one but me in a 50 kilometer area? I'm not so absorbed by Ben, but a man nonetheless. Me being friends with Files is not a reason to be so relaxed. I also hope she wouldn't open the bottom drawer. It should weigh any awkward thoughts. Should I offer her to change of clothes? My swimming scene could be dry, but it would take a lot of time. And I also really wanted to see her in one of my t-shirts. It's hot inside and I needed to add to air the room and clean up a bit. I just noticed how messy my place was. I had to spot the mess when it actually gradually rose, but now that I'm looking at it with fresh eyes, I understood the full magnitude of the tragedy. My workplace was buried underneath wood chips. Gravity drags sit in the room for ages. I was used to stepping over them, but I no longer noticed them. All my dishes weren't the same, where they're on the shelves, soaking in still water. Was that mole growing over there? I felt disgusted by myself. I think my mom wasn't here to witness this nightmare. I started by the kitchen, gathered everything that missed the garbage bin due to my impeccable aim, washed all the dishes and went over to the shelves with a wet cloth. Actually felt quite refreshing. It does seem to be ages old, even though I was sure I cleaned everything just a month ago. Ah, you could drown it, Phil, just by being in this house for a while. When I finished cleaning the first floor, my trunk, my trucks, trunks, trunk was filled with eight garbage bags, one of which was filled strictly with plastic bottles. You go through a lot of plastic bottles, do you? There was much less garbage on the second floor. Probably because I really visited it. So all I really do was get rid of all get was getting rid of the dust, whipping up whipping up the pillows. I got to look at it. Motherfucker, can I please speak without stuttering and stumbling over words? It was much of this guy was on the second floor. Got to work, and after some time, I heard the shower door creak. Welcome back. Thanks, you've done a good job. I lived here back in the day, we used to boil water specifically to shower. Ah, uh, yeah, good old days. Every modern house here has their own personal boiler. I see. Did you find everything? Yeah, I knew where our washing machine could dry, but I never tried it myself. I had to dig the manual for some info. This was bad. She did open the bottom drawer after all. Now that was awkward. Julie was washing again, and I wanted to throw myself out the window. She stood still and studied the floor for what felt like an eternity, then she finally spoke up. You've been cleaning. A good idea. Can I help somehow? There's really no need to. Please, I have nothing to do until Grandpa comes anyway. It's at least the way I'll do something useful. I was grateful for her attempt to spell the organizer you, so I said not to protest. Thank God the mic is on. Well, it'd be great if you could just dust the pillows line and pull up behind the curtains. Julie lifted the curtains. That's my nest! Your nest? I should drag everything I deemed interesting in here. Someone called me a magpie, and this was called this place. This place she called my nest. This is my bedroom. Isn't it a bit cramped for a bedroom? As if you'd understand. This was a royal chamber for a little girl. So let's get to it. You think it's a good idea to go outside just after the shower? Well, it's a. Well, it's just for a bit. The clothes dry much faster when you wear them. An officer will blame me if you catch a cold. You act like an old man. What are you, 80? You look like you're in your early 20s. Don't tell me that you never jumped to the snow after. I never had, as a matter of fact. 
I gave up. Julia scooped up through the pillows and ran downstairs. I was rummaging through the closet when I heard strange sounds coming from outside. Julia threw the pillows around, beat them against each other, covered them in snow, and kept on sneezing. I could hardly call it Dustin, but I couldn't help but smile since she was so enthusiastic about it. And then my phone rang. And it was my mom. My teeth clenched involuntarily as hot as a bad trick. I didn't pick up. Not because I didn't want to talk, quite the contrary. I wanted to admit everything I was holding back for eight years. And I wanted to shout at her with all my anger and spite. I was sure I'd feel better. Chickened out. I was afraid that I would regret it. Why are you so gloomy? Who called? I didn't notice her come back. Good thing I didn't pick her up, and she didn't want to hear what was on my mind. Julie was strangely worried about my problems. Wrong number. You done? Sir, yes, sir! Yeah, actually, no. Snowflake sparkled in her hair. I'll clean up the nest. Promise you won't go into it. Go in until I finish, okay? Sure thing. I just appeared behind the curtain, under some unfamiliar scene. I got back to my own duties. I heard some crack. What are you doing up there? Peeling off wallpaper? Mind your own business. So I shouldn't worry? No reaction. I was going over the cells when she finally stopped struggling. Can I go in now? No, not yet. But you seem to be finished. I'm most certainly not. Wait a bit longer. Scrub the floor for now. I stepped on something here. What arrogance. Hit the floor was definitely in need of some scrubbing. That's all. Go in. I looked behind the curtain. Julie was lying on her back straight. The light of the old lamp was trembling slightly, as if it would die out any moment. Oh, you align the pillows. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Come here. She patted the pillow beside her. She had a quizzical look. Hey, I'm not suggesting anything strange. Come on, lie down. Don't be afraid. I'm not the one who should be afraid. I crawled towards Julia without arguing. Hey, be careful with my hair. Sorry, sorry. You ready? I shrugged. Not exactly sure what to expect. She flipped the switch. Wow. The lights went out, and in a second, the... <laughs> what is with these words? It is so rare I hear them. I barely use them myself. The oblique ceiling was lit up with a bunch of bright colors. Gaps in the surprise. Bleh, bleh, bleh. I gasped in surprise. I did peel off the wallpaper. Yeah. What's this? How? The rest of paint. When I was little, Grandpa used to draw, Grandma used to draw with me a lot. This wall, or rather ceiling, became my canvas. Did you know she was an artist? No. Pops always closes off whenever he remembers her. Do all men find, find it so hard to open up? Look, there's a squirrel in the corner. He bet in the forest, and I drew him to do this on the same day. Looks like a rat. Well, all roads look alike. And what's up with its tail? Stop it. I was really bad at drawing back then. I still am, to be honest. Julia's drawings were easy to spot. Uneven, scrawny, with a lot, with a lot of unwanted details. And my grandma's were the exact of it. Simple, but artsy. And who's this girl riding her bed? You? Julia mumbled something to herself. I don't remember. Maybe grandma drew it. Why'd you cover him up? Julia sighed. When she died, I couldn't sleep here. So I just went downstairs to Grandpa, who was working through the night to keep his mind off things. He put wallpaper over the paintings to ease my pain as well, but I just couldn't force myself to come back. You miss her? I see her in my dreams fairly often. You even talk to her. Sometimes it's very hard to wake up. Julia sniffled. She did it as quietly as possible, but I was too close to miss it. I could feel the smell waft of her hair, warm and fuzzy, and a room unlike any shampoo. Now it's your turn to tell the story. She was trying to be upbeat and cheerful, but her trembling voice gave her away. My turn, huh? What story can I tell? What's up with your mom? Look, it's a very long story. Hey, my two stories were fairly long as well. Can't you give me one in return? Two. When was that? My my grandma and my sleepwalking. She was right. I heard a lot about Julie even before we met. And now I knew even more. Holy cow music. I knew a lot about 
about Julie. She was right. I heard a lot about Julie even before we met. And now I knew even more. And I was still a complete mystery to her. I like listening to her speak. It's only a it was only fair to return the favor and share my honest thoughts. It wasn't such a bad idea, was it? Probably. <laughs> Where do I start? Start from the beginning. How did you two meet? Oh, it was on a sunny summer day. To be a burst into laughter, the tension hanging in the air was gone in a flash. I had a wonderful family, to be frank. I was sure of it. It's a warm and loving family. It was a very rare among my peers at the time. Dad tried to spend most of his free time with me. Mom always supported him. I was the happiest boy on the planet. Every day was fantastic, and I couldn't imagine it being any other way. Julia held her breath, listening closely. And then, Dad was gone. And they had a magic atmosphere and went away with him. I was 14 at the time. Ah, the difficult age. Turned out the boys who weren't as pampered as me matured a lot faster. I was an outcast. Too soft and naive. Dad's death became a catalyst for their bullying. Children tend to be cruel, you know. I let it understood they were jealous. They thought I was feeling superior and didn't want to hang out with them since I had my ideal family. And when it became not so ideal, they gloated over it. Did you really feel superior? Maybe. I was extremely proud of my dad. He was an air pilot. Sometimes he picked me up from school right after the landing. Boy, it's awesome uniform. A coat with full coat and straps on the sleeve, and a pilot cap. Couldn't be happier at the time. <laughs> and that may have been the problem. You shouldn't show off your happiness to someone who's less fortunate. And your mom? My mom had basically disappeared. She started working after Dad had passed away, and we would not see each other for weeks at a time. She came home when I was already in bed. She went to work when I was still asleep. I was only remembered, reminded of her presence by the fact that she constantly, le constantly left some food on the table. I thought, I, com I thought a common grievance would unite us, but it put us farther and farther apart with each passing day. Our, our relationship was reduced to occasional phone calls, Saturday weekend breakfasts. I started skipping school because of the bullying. My grades dropped. She was informed of that, but hadn't said a single word to me. And I would have been happy if she shouted at me. Or, shown, or I had shown concern in any other way. I stopped trying to get rid of that icky and pleasant feeling from my memories of the day that grew increasingly sad in my mind. Julia didn't rush me. And then, I ran away from home. I didn't plan to, it just turned out that way. One day I came home from school after a good thrashing and called her. I wanted to spill everything to her. I wanted to tell on the bullies. I didn't care if the whole school thought I was hiding behind my mom. I wanted to help with much more than to stop bullying. I wanted to help much more than to stop bullying itself. She could have at least said something to encourage me. But she just dropped the call. It was probably busy, but I felt so betrayed. Nothing that your most precious person didn't have time for you. I left my phone, gathered my things, and took off. How old were you at the time? Sixteen. What happened next? I spent a couple nights at the train station and signed up for a human job. I was lucky to find a company that helped me rent an apartment. After two weeks, my boss told me there was a search going on for me. I met my mom. She asked if everything was all right. She didn't even flinch. I told her how I felt, and I was much better than before. She gave me my phone, a bit of cash, and left for good. End of story. Well, it's certainly not the end, considering you're waiting for her to visit. I don't expect much. Does that have anything to do with your trembling hands? Eh, so you noticed. That wasn't intentional. No, it may have played a part. Julie was deep in thought, and I, fin I, was fin and I was finally able to sign her leave. It was hard to share personal stuff like this, but it was even harder to keep it pent up inside. <laughs> I never told Pops the whole story. Because that would look unmanly. It would look childish. Nonsense. It's not like childish about sharing your problems with other people. In fact, being childish is not an offense either. So being an adult is far worse. Eh. So that's why Pops is like that. Like what? Very inf... Infantile. Screw the English language. I'm glad to hear it. If you're not hinting at all times, of course. We both laughed at the same time. No, sometimes I find it hard to very... Very hard to understand my parents. Especially my dad. 
He never once visited Grandma since the time he left. Even when she got sick, didn't go to the hospital or to a funeral. Thought I would never forget him for this, but I did. Eventually. And still, I couldn't quite understand him. Grandpa didn't say a thing. I'd be furious if I was him. But he bit, he would, he would, blah, blah, blah. But he was so calm and collected. As if no. Motherfucker. As if it was the way things were supposed to be. I always thought there was something that adults know that we don't. And as soon as we get that knowledge, we become adults ourselves. A woman child, 23 years of age. Hey, it's rude to remind a lady of her age. You're young and pretty. Isn't that the, isn't it the best time for that? She swallowed her words. Was she embarrassed? I wanted to carry my gaze to her, but my vision was limited by how dim the light was. Anyways, it's not that simple. Julie continued the conversation. When I graduated school, we had a huge fight with Dad. I miss Grandpa and wanted to come here, and he insisted I enter a university. I cried a lot and said some really stupid things, but he still heard me out. And when I calmed down, he hugged me real tight and said that I was just like my grandma. This is the only time he ever did something like that, he and Mom. They always thought strong emotions was something unnecessary. I think being like them means being an adult. But at that one, I understood just how deeply he loved her, and how hard it was on him. I mean, everyone has their own way of dealing with grief and supporting, showing support. Your mom certainly didn't care about you. Certainly did care about you, since she was always cooking your breakfasts. And how should have, sh how, and how should have she known you needed her when you didn't even tell her about it once? It's cool when someone can understand with you without words, but try to get into her shoes. She was supporting your family by herself after she'd lost your dad. You'd expect, her, you'd expect support from her, but you didn't consider she also needed it. Well, she never said anything. And so did you. She organized a search for you. She was worried that something might have happened to you. And you told her you were better off without her. What was she supposed to feel? Her husband passed away, and her only son turned his back on her. It's a miracle that she was tough enough to carry that cross. Julia's voice trembled a little. My eyes stung a bit. And you should know what it's like to lose someone precious. And why would you force other people to live through it? Not to mention your own mom. I have never looked at it that way. Try not to say anything you would regret from now on. Okay? Yeah. It's a promise then. It's a promise. She sniffled loudly. Good to hear. Julia was about to get up, but I gently touched her shoulder. I'll stay here for a little while. I didn't want her to see my face right now. Julia returned to her spot without arguing. <laughs> There's also nothing eternally wrong with, about, with, um, wrong with crying, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I looked up at the many drawings. One in particular caught my eye. Shades of violet and pink. Giant bay reaching up to the sky. In the forest, I was hardly reaching the bear's belly. I felt like it was staring at, it at me. Sounds broken by sounds coming from Julia's stomach. Oops. Time to go downstairs. You think so? I'd love to chill here some more, but I don't cook something for you. If I don't cook something for you, for you right now, I'll be consumed by guilt. Or you. <laughs> I called my way outside. Julia followed too. The sun had almost hidden behind the treetops. It's getting dark. Pop should hurry. Your mom as well. If there's really going to be a blizzard tonight, to be perfectly honest, there's nothing about that. There's nothing about that in the forecast. I don't know why Pop decided it's going to happen. It's a bit windy. It doesn't to constitute a blizzard. If Grandpa said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Why are you so sure? He has a gift. To forecast weather. To see the future. He would beckon me to look at the window sometimes, and I did. That just to see the bo Roar Borealis appear right before my eyes. I don't even, I don't know how he did that to this day, but I don't doubt his words. <laughs> I smirked, being so naive at her age was rather cute. Pops probably just, probably could just t could tell by his bones aching. <laughs> did you know that Aurora Borealis is just a solar dust grinding away at our atmosphere? A mighty malicious thing. And did you know you're a complete bore? Insult me some more, and you'll be left starving. I'll eat some snow. We kept on arguing until we reached the kitchen. 
and only had a couple of pieces of pizza and some pasta with sausages in terms of ready food lying around the fridge. On that, it was stuffed with canned foods, vegetables, and raw meat. Sh you are inviting your mom, and now Pops is coming over. Why are you not cooking actual food? You have some vegetables, some raw meat. You can make something with that. And depending on the canned food, you can make even more. Pizza or pasta? Well, let's start with pasta. Start? Well, I'm practically starving here. Come to think about it, you were wandering for about a month without any food. It's a mystery how you managed to survive. It's my normal diet. Very bold, Damon. Now that explains everything. What do you mean? The fact that you eat so much, you vacuum eat nutrition and then use it sparingly. Like a bear. Yeah, don't be shy, eat up. <laughs> Julia started consuming food with enthusiasm, but her face contorted right away. And what master chef may I ask cooked this? It was me. What about it? How in the world did you manage to ruin something as simple as pasta? I scoop some pasta with a hook. It smelled and tasted ordinary. Seems fine to me. I ate it with no problem. Poor, poor creature. Must be tough living your life with no idea how real food tastes. Oh, don't blow it out of proportion. Are you going to cook for your mom as well? Of course. Oh, stop making that face. It's not that bad. Besides, it's not like I'm forcing you to eat it. Alright, so we have Supernatural Bear. We have Lady That Blacks Out. I have a feeling that's connected. I'm okay, thank you. I'll at the very least save someone else from the suffering. How nice of you. Just keep in mind, if I get sick, you'll be the one to blame. Or your gluttony. Shut up. Stop speaking with your mouth full. Also, did you know that your metabolism slows down as you age? With eating habits like that, you'll get fat, ugly, and incredibly sick when you get old. Boeing. I went over to my pocket and pulled out a key. Right, I almost forgot. Oh, fish. Speak after you, Chew. Julia grumbled in protest. It's a cellar key. Pops gave it to me a while back. I never knew what the cellar, what the cellar even existed. I never moved any of the furniture here, after all. Julia had finally finished her the sausage. And we used to store sacks of grain and potatoes there, and pick, pickled vegetables. I hope there's nothing there that. I hope there's nothing there that was once edible. As far as I know, Pops keeps all sorts of garbage there. New Year tree ornaments included. Julia's eyes turned to, turned as big as plates. Now what? Can I help you decorate the house? Please, 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 pretty please. All right, you're a holidays for children enthusiast. I haven't decorated a New Year tree in ages. I almost forgot its smell. There's plenty of them out go outside. Go have a sniff. Meanie. I thought Pops would pick you up by now, to be honest. I gotta call him. Andrew, my boy, what's up? You coming soon? Did you forget I've got plans for tonight? What are you even doing? Ah, well, I was tinkering with the engine a bit. I'm done now. Almost ready to go. You a car mechanic now? I hope you didn't break anything else. If you don't come, your granddaughter here will have to spend the night in the forest. Julia stared at me in utter shock. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And he hung up. Don't look at me like that. It was just a joke. He'll be in a couple of hours. Strange. I thought I'd be rushing here after hearing about you. But he's not in any sort of hurry. Who knows what business he has? Oh, well, I know all about his business. Either he is a solemn tree or smoking up in his workshop. That's all the business he can have. Will you ever stop grumbling? It's not even clear when your mom will come. Did you want to call her, by the way? Sighed. After my conversation with Julia, I didn't know how to approach mom and what to say to her. I'll call her in a bit. Probably. No, no, you have to call her right now. And why is that? You can't run away from her forever. You hung up on her before, right? It's a simple courtesy to call back. Alright, alright, sparing you your preaching. I doubt mom's not by trying to control my trembling fingers. Hey, you coming? There's something wrong with the car. I need to change the parts for spares, or so they told me. Should I pick you up? No, no, I've already found a driver. He's going your way. Who's that driver? I don't go in the car with a complete stranger. He looks like a good fellow. Do you think all predators have their intent written all over their face? Send me his plate number for safe measure. Uh, sure, uh, Andrew? What? No, nothing. See ya. Bye. I ended the, I ended the call. That was close. Julia peered into me. I peered into my eyes triumphantly. Wow, you can be like that too. 
purple. Caring. I'm skewed. Stop imagining things. It's just ordinary safe concerns. I had sent you to Pops on the taxi, I would have remembered his plate number as well. Could you do that? Could you do that from the very stop? No, I was speaking hypothetically. Taxis don't come here. Her enthusiasm didn't waver. Well, since Grandpa and your mom won't be here for a while, I can help you decorate the tree and even cook you, cook you something for dinner, if you're a good boy. Pops wanted me to decorate the tree with mom. To be precise, he wanted me to make my guest happy. You met my mom, right? Not like he could have predicted Julia coming here. Well, if she arrives too late, we may not have enough time to do it. Alright, we'll do it, but let's start with the outside of the house. Why outside first? Well, if you were to believe Pops forecast, we should hurry up before the blizzard comes. <sighs> oh, hey, the hat of power moved. This place actually looks much better after being cleaned. Alright, there's a picture of a cat, a bear, some black and white picture, and two drawings. One of them looks like a slug. I can't tell what the other is. A cellar was filled with non unfunctioning electronics, furniture, and old boxes. <laughs> I am not used to talking this much. The cellar was filled with unfunctioning electronics, furniture, and old boxes. Julia swiftly located the ones we needed, and we turned the furniture to its rightful place. She opened up one of the boxes in the blink of an eye. There they are. Grandpa used the used to hang these lights on the roof. It always looked sunny. Did you think I'm not up to the task? Sir, no, sir. <laughs> she is very spunky. It was already pitch dark outside. I hoped that Julie would help me hang the lights, but she probably thought that that making a snowman was a much better idea. I brought out a ladder and climbed to the roof. Lights themselves were easy, so saw so things grew quickly. I was on the other side of the roof in no time. Julia, on the other hand, was so engrossed in playing with the snow that she was practically unaware of surroundings and didn't look my way even once. She was seemingly used to being left on her own devices, judging how good she was at rolling these giant snowballs up by herself. I wonder how well did she connect with her peers. Did she have a boyfriend? I, for example, was a complete rookie in relationships. Never even had a chance. The girls at school avoided me for apparent reasons. The only female that showed me any attention was a lunch lady from a nearby from a nearby factory, Larissa, who flirted with pretty much everybody. <laughs> all in all, I was a total virgin. I felt worth them coming from Julia, though. It didn't look like kind of courtesy. I could have even believed she was into me, well, if she would look at me even once. But not today, I guess. I'm done here. Look at I wasn't pleased while I was deep in thought. A bear had emerged from the forest. Julia didn't notice either, but I did. But I did notice her. Oh, it looks beautiful. Your mom will surely appreciate the effort. It busted you up on two legs. A sated bear would do that to show off and warn others to not move closer. You wouldn't find a sated bear wandering the forest in winter, though. I took a deep breath and shouted at the top of my lungs, "Julia, run!" Julia sprung to action and got off the ladder and a blanket, and the bear just stood there. I'm moving. I threw off the ladder so it couldn't climb up. What? What's there? Julia shot the bear a quizzical look. It studied us for a couple minutes, tilting its head to different angles, and then just turned its back on us and strolled into the forest, almost as if we were unworthy of its attention. <sighs> that was a close call. You scared me to death. You should have told me it was just a bear. Just a bear? Are you out of your mind? He would have swallowed you whole. Nonsense. Tell me what. What are you, what are you so afraid of? I thought it was a forest witch. The forest witch. Huh? The forest witch. When I was little, Grandma told me there was a witch in the forest. A witch that killed birds and beasts and drank their blood to prolong her own life. Are you dumb? How can you believe in such fairy tales at your age? But it's true, I even saw her once. How old were you? Five. Little kids of magic could take on a rotten tree for an old person. She wasn't old at all. Really the stomach reminded, it's, uh, reminded of itself at just the right, right moment. Hungry again. No, it's your pasta talking. What's up with that snowman's attire? Where did you get that? I found it lying around. Well, tell me. Where's the ladder? What a moron. She definitely did not like me now. I don't want to hear that from someone who believes in forest witches. 
and you and you are the genius who decided to get rid of our pants to get down. What do we do now? The window was locked from the other side. Well, we can always jump, but it's so high, I'm scared. I just can't understand you. I tried, I really did. But how can you be scared of forest witches in such small heights, but not bears? But it's so high, I'm scared. The window is locked from the other side. No, I went backwards. And how aren't you scared of going into the forest at negative, negative 30 degrees, negative 30 Celsius? Why'd you even climb here when you couldn't have just ran into the house? Uh, see, I feel a lot safer around you. Man, it's good to be. Stop it. Stop what? Stop being so cute. Please. You think I'm cute? You're as cute as you are weird. You say it like I'm the biggest weirdo on the planet. I didn't say that. Let's see. I'll jump down and bring back the ladder. Okay? Mm-hmm. I landed in the snow without an and got the ladder back up. Julia sleepersly placed her foot on one of the ladder planks. Again and again. On the fourth plank, her foot slipped. Watch out! I stretched out my hands reflectively and Julia ran right into my mouth. It's alright, you're in safe hands. Thank you. She blushed but didn't avert her gaze. I can't believe how late she was. I have a question I just need to ask. Sure. Can you promise to answer it honestly? She nodded and held her breath. Where did all the weight you had been accumulated the years go? Congratulations, you've won a medal. She jumped off she jumped off to the ground. What kind? For ruining a perfect moment. What do you I was interrupted by a noise coming from the road. Someone's car. I doubt it was Pops or Mom. They couldn't have been here this fast. Julia seemed to think the same. So soon? It will sound sad. Noise becoming louder. Windows in my hand started shuddering. This was too loud. It wasn't a normal car. It just seemed to be a lot of them. No one had turned our way, though. I wonder how much... What... What would they pay to work on New Year's Eve? What was that? I suppose it's due to be cut down. They finally got to work, it seems. Impossible. This forest should be disturbed. Just this forest? I mean, I don't like the idea, but why this particular forest? You'd laugh at me again if I told you. I only tend to laugh at extremely childish beliefs. Let's see. It's because a bear spirit lives here, right? You know about it? This girl is just... The whole town knows. I bet you don't believe in it. That's okay. Did you see it as well? I did. I didn't, but it definitely exists. This means there's a higher chance to meet a forest witch than the bear spirit around these spots. Julia taught me a mysterious smile. So cute, I won't even try to change your mind. But if it'll calm me down, Pops is sure nothing's gonna happen to the forest. The spirit, the bear spirit will come and save the day like it always does. Your grandpa said so, it's gonna happen. Let me guess, because he can see the future. It's one of the reasons. Test my faith. Oh, <laughs> test my faith. Oh, you won't. You mean spirited skeptic. I won't budge. <laughs> Wasn't my intention at all. By the way, what about the tree? I found a really good one out of the backyard. Come on. I'll join you soon. Apart from the racket from logging trucks, it was incredibly quiet outside. Even the air felt softer. It was either calm before the storm, or Pops was wrong about it with his prediction. <laughs> oh my god. She's a bean. An adorable, weird, awkward bean. I'm still skeptical. In fact, I'm more skeptical now than I am ever. <clears throat> Julie was growing like a, glowing like a rainbow wrapped in countless lights. Do I look pretty? Very much so. I'm especially interested in what brand your earrings are. Where'd you get them? Found them lying around. How old are you again? It's a secret. Julia burst into laughter. She didn't look like an adult before, but now she was behaving like a mysterious little girl. Will we decorate the tree or are you going to spend the rest of your life in these boxes? <laughs> Wait, there's so many cool things in them. Fireworks. A whole box of them. You can't decorate a tree with that. But you can't fire them. They're too old, probably past the expiration date. You're such a... such a what? Skeptic. Pessimist. Very nice to meet you. Fireworks have no expiration date. Not at all. They, might, they spent so much time in that cellar they're probably wet on the inside. So they definitely won't fire. You, you, you're you boring you to sleep. No, har no harm in trying, you know? Sighed. Fine, we can try it. 
Let's do it later, okay? I bought the tree, brought the tree after all. But there's still so many. Oh, what now? I believe in. I replied in an unexpectedly rude manner. My very voice expressed much more irritation than I actually felt. Julia, who was just now was brighter than the full blown, full blown New Year tree, shifted to a dark moon. She looked at me with disappointment and turned away. It's nothing. I love a guilt was stuck in my throat. I'm genuinely interested. It doesn't matter. What's that? Books? Julie looked at me with doubtful eyes. My childhood photos. Books. Grandma snack books. Can I take a look? Do you like little girls? Who do you take me for? I meant the notebooks. Your grandma was a skilled artist. Oh? Besides, I've already seen plenty of your childhood photos. Pervert. It's not like I asked for it. Pop's just like bragging about you. Julie handed me a leather-bound tome. A sign depicting half of a spruce to keep it on its front cover. I skimmed through the book. There was a lot of text, but not so much in terms of drawings. It's all handwritten. It looks more like a diary. I call it a collection of our land's legends. Grandma did it all by herself. I like should read it later, alright. Otherwise, we won't be able to decorate our tree in time. I've got everything covered in that regard. Julia took the task as seriously as possible. She was even she was meticulous in picking the toys and where to put them on a tree. She would spend up to five minutes placing one. And if that place was too high for her, I would be the one to place it. Oh, not there. And I follow your directions. Just a bit to the left. Now that's it. By the way, have you ever decorated a New Year tree with your family? Every single year until Dad passed away. He absolutely loved the winter holidays. So we would always set up a tree nearly December and would only get rid of it at the end of January. It's a lot of fun. What was the most fun about it? When I was a kid, Dad always put me on his shoulder so I would place the star, the main piece of decoration, by myself. I was always horrible at it, and Mom always fixed it without me noticing. We always shared a hobby with Dad, collecting aircraft models made of plastic, wooden plastic. <laughs> I had a vast collection in my room, from huge to very small, and the tiniest of them we would use as toys for our tree. Mom would make us cheesecakes with hot chocolate. We would wolf them down while decorating. Sounds awesome. What about you? I mean, from the time you used to live here. We would camp out with Grandpa to get the tree. Camp out? You have, you have plenty of trees in your backyard. Julia's eyes became dreamy. We looked for the finest spruce in the whole forest. It was That was our goal. Grandma would prepare our backpacks, and we even took a tent with us. We traversed the forest for hours, even when we got tired. So a fireplace for roasted sausages. <laughs> It felt like a genuine adventure when I was in it, where I was an explorer, following his guide to an unknown land. We even spent the night under the open sky once. We had a little too, we had too little energy to come back. And what about bears? We met them from time to time, but they'd never attack us. How in the world? Because of Grandpa. Hmm. Does he have some sort of special aura? Something like that. I think he's the forest guardian. And don't make that face. Read Grandma's book first. Alright, alright, please. Continue. When we eventually found the right tree, Grandpa would cut it down, tie it to his back, and we would get, go home. We always returned really quick. It seemed like badges to me back then. Uh, now I understand we were just going in circles around the house the whole time. Oh, Trixa. <laughs> it was such a grand adventure for me every time. When we arrived home, Grandma would always claim she lost the cellar key and we went searching for it together. It was a New Year festival festival design for me and me alone. They should have loved you a lot. I know, right? And then we decorated the tree together. It was very small, so I could only hand the toys over to Grandpa, just like with you today. I told him where the toy, where should the toys go, and he would always misplace them. I would always make a fuss about it, and he would pick me up so I could do it myself. Childhood is a magical time, and one's parents are their personal magicians. Judging by what you told me, your whole family consists of mystic creatures. Hey, stop that. Alright, alright. I'll think you'll look like a wonderful woman just in yourself someday. Julie told me in a bear smile and flicked some hair behind her ear. You really think so? I do. I also felt heat, heat rise up in my cheeks. It's a bit embarrassing. Sorry. It's okay. To be honest, it made me a bit happier. And that's it for the tree, I think. You don't seem too happy. We were done too fast. You know, when I have a giant family, I'd place a huge fluffy tree in the middle of the room and buy a ton of toys so we can, so the decoration process takes the whole evening until there's no space left on the tree. Sounds like a plan. But how can you be so sure your family will be giant? Will you even have a family? Julia shrugged. I just know it. 
pop the powers again. Shut up. Sure, we can strip down a tree if you want. We can stop dilly-dallying and take care of the second floor.